Hey, what's up? Welcome back. This is the Procon Geek, and in today's video, I want to get started on the Procon Geek Slab Detailing 101, which I call Get in PV with Slab Detailing in short and concise lesson. So, without wasting too much of your time, let's get right into the video. Okay, first things first, if this is your first time coming to the channel, please click on the subscribe button. Also, click on the notification so that you get any notification whenever I upload a video and also remember to leave a like and comment and without wasting too much time let's get right into why we are doing this video anyways so as I told you in the introduction we're going to be getting preview with slab detailing in short and concise lessons and this is going to be part one which is 101 this is mostly just for beginners and as you can see we're going to get started with what is a slab until we get all the way to the detailment rules and we finish it left in new yes that is in French so we're going to be covering a lot of topics or should I say a lot of concept in this one but what we want to do is we want to keep to hit the road running we don't want to waste too much time and we want to keep this video short and concise so that by the end of this series you guys are able to detail a slab and then we will also look into a number of examples so without wasting too much time, let's get into what I call the very first series and we're going to start with the definitions. Okay, so some of you may be asking me now, why are we doing definitions? I thought we were going to be doing detailing, but then you need to know the basics. You need to know, understand what is a slab before you actually even detail a slab. And also one of the reasons why we're doing this series is because, as you know, I'm now using Procon 3.1 and because of some of the things that I'm still playing around with it, so what I decided is let's just get started on the slab detailing series whilst I play around with Procon 3.1 and once I'm done, we can come back and I'll start teaching you what you need to do. Anyways, back to Procon pads. So what exactly is a slab? Well, this is quite simple. A slab is any structural member that is constructed to provide flat horizontal planes. And this is in, you can call it building floors, roofs, bridges, Anywhere where you need a floor area where mostly you're going to be placing things and it's in a horizontal plane that is definitely going to be a slab for you. So your floors, your second floors, your roofs, as they say, it, bridges, whatever. Look around you. Most of the horizontal planes that you see are going to be slabs and even a staircase, the landing is treated as a slab, right? Now, once you know what a slab is, and obviously I'm popping up pictures for you to see everything on the screen. The next thing that you just want to know is you got to be preview with uh, at least four, the most common four, the four most common types of slabs. And in this case, you have number one, your conventional slab, where this is a slab that is supported on walls or a system of beams and columns, right? And it can be simply supported or restrained. And when you're talking about conventional slabs as well, there are actually two types of slabs. You have the one-way slab and the two-way slab. And I've also provided some illustrations on the screen for you. And what we'll also do is I'll put this file in the link in the description below so that you can check it out and I also have what we call I also I think I have a PDF file as well so let me just print a PDF right now right it already exists we're going to replace it and I think there we go so that we can always come from program pads and also come down to the PDF file if you need to see much more clearly whatever works best for you so I'll provide the two files for you but as I was saying, you have a one-way slab and a two-way slab. But I think I'll go to program pads because I think that's where it's seen much better. So in a one-way slab, basically this is a slab that is either supported on just two opposite sides or the longer side is going to be two times greater than the length of the shorter side. So that's what this implies is that bending occurs in one direction. In this case, I tried to illustrate it using this arc that you can see on the screen right now. So it's not the best illustration, but at least I think you get the idea. For example, in this case, the longer side is 10,000 millimeters, which is 10 meters and the shorter side is 2,500. So LY is actually four times than LX. Therefore, this is a one way slab. Then the next thing that you guys are going to see is we also have a two way slab. So this is a slab that's either supported on all four edges or the longer side is less than twice the length of the shorter side. For example, in this case, I have an illustration for you. 4,000 is definitely not two times 2,500 because twice 2,500 is actually 5,000. So in this case, this is a two-way snap and bending okay is in both directions as illustrated by the curves that I am showing you or the ones that you can see on the screen right now. All right. And one thing you need to note is for conventional snaps, the minimum 
or usually the average or the minimum thickness that you can have is 100 millimeters or 4 inches, right? So you cannot have a snap that's less than 100 millimeters thick. But the normal thing is you, they can range from 8 inches to 16 inches, which is 200 millimeters to 400 millimeters for larger loads. But sometimes they can even go thicker. For example, in the decks of a bridge, you can even have a very, very thick beam. Oh, slab I mean you can even have 750 thick slabs so that's dependent on the load so all of this comes down to the design then after the conventional slab the next thing that you will need to look at is the flat slab so basically a flat slab is going to be supported directly by concrete columns and there will be no beams right for example let me just show you two conventional slabs I think I have them up there so this is the two conventional slabs so normally this is going to be simply supported and it's going to have a wall support, wall support, wall support, as you can see. I'll show you in the file as well. And then you have a restrained conventional slab, which is continuous where it is supported by beams throughout. So this is your conventional slab. But when it comes to a flat slab, you basically don't have any restraints or walls underneath. Instead, what you have is you have a column straight into the slab. So this slab is going to be supported directly by the columns. And this is suitable where you need plain ceilings or where you need an open plan. We all know architects, especially these days, are all about open plans. So this is the type of slab that you'd want to do. But the minimum thickness when it comes to flat slabs is going to be a minimum of 200 millimeters, right? So you, the conventional slab, you're going to go lower than 100 millimeters. With the flat slab, you're going to go lower than 8 inches. Your minimum is going to be 8 inches. Now, there are also four types of... Uh, flat slabs where for example you i've written them down so you might have a plain slab without a drop and which also has columns that don't have column heads then you have a slab that has a drop but with a column that does not have a column head then you have a slab that doesn't have a drop but has a column with a column head and then you could have a slab that has both a drop and also has columns with column heads so if you need an illustration there it is as you can see there you have your columns and your slab and no beams the columns are supported or the slab is supported directly on the columns now the next thing that you'd want to look at or the other type of slab that you should be preview with is the hollow ribbed slabs so these are slabs with voids or cores right in them and the reason for this is just to save on material so the design is also comes out, it's, 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 I could say it's a bit complicated as compared to conventional slabs. And you know, usually they come as pre-cast, then they're laid out and jointed on site. So for more information on this, I've, let, I've left links in the description below so that you can just go to websites or you can see papers where they describe hollow rib slabs. And then after hollow rib slabs, the last type that you should be preview with is the waffle slab. So these are slabs with square grids which are visible underneath. You might have seen them. Uh, these are not common in most developing countries because the formwork is a bit difficult. But then the good thing about these ones is they can span longer as well. And they require less material. And they also just, you know, they might, they're a little bit tricky to design. But they are the best types of slabs, especially the are more economical. So links are in the description if you need to see more on this. And... All right, so what we're going to do is we want to keep this short and concise. So what we do is we're just going to look at the definitions for today's video. And into the next video, we're going to continue with the general notes. And as we go on, go on. So this is it for the first video. We just wanted to look at the definitions before we get. This is how you actually get started with the steps. So acquaint yourself with all these types of steps that are there. And as we go forward, but what you need to understand in this series, we're going to be looking mostly at the two conventional slabs. That is to say the simply supported slabs and your restrained and continuous slabs so uh this is it coming from me what we're going to do and also please don't mind the audio i know i'm talking a bit low then as usual the delivery is a bit different but as i told you i am making videos as i'm traveling around on the road so it's going to be a bit difficult and a bit different but bear with me and we will just get this tutorial up and up and going so what we're going to do is in the next videos we're going to look at the general notes where we're going to cover the concrete grades the cover the minimum reinforcement and maximum reinforcement some illustrations i'll show you what is required when you're detailing then we're also going to look at some general notes as we're looking at the spacing of rebars thickness of slabs and also i think the other thing we need to look at the rebar lap lengths and then the notations what each letter means then afterwards we're going to look at the curtailment of steel why it's important what you should do and then we're going to look at the rules of curtailments where we also still look at the conventional slab that is the simply supported and the continuous slab that is also restrained. So this is it coming from me. Thank you very much for subscribing. 
Uh, if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and until next time, I'll definitely see you. So what we're going to do is let's wrap the video here, and I'll see you in the next video where we continue with the general notes.